The last step is to look at how to hook up our own scripted behavior into this system, right? And if you know some basic scripting, this should be pretty straightforward. We're gonna write a simple script that plays a sound when the object becomes visible and plays a different one when it disappears. So we are going to, let's do this on the turret. We are going to add an empty object called audio player. And we're gonna add an audio source. And we're gonna turn off play on awake and we're just gonna turn down the volume to 0.5, let's say, so it's not super loud. And then we're gonna add a script. And this is going to be called play on state change. And this is just gonna be super simple little script that I'm just gonna write quickly for you guys here. So basically, we're just going to have two audio clips and the source that we just added, right? So we're gonna have an audio clip called a peer clip and one called, you guessed it, disappear clip. We'll change start to awake and we're gonna get rid of update because we're not gonna use it. And then in awake, we're gonna get a reference. Oh, we need a, a variable for our audio source. We're gonna make a private audio source called source. And then we're just gonna say source equals get component audio source. Then we just need two public functions, or three public functions. We're gonna have a public function the returns void called initialize. And this is just to keep the audio source off. Uh, and actually we'll do that here. We're gonna turn it off. We're gonna say source.enabled equals false. So we're gonna turn it off once we get a reference to it. And then here, we're gonna turn it on via a public function so that we can enable it before we wanna use it um, and not get any stray audio. And so then we're going to have a public function that returns void called play on appear. And we're just gonna say source.clip equals appear clip and source.play. So super simple little script here. And then we're just gonna copy and paste. And this is going to be play on disappear. And this is going to be, can you guess? It's going to be our disappear clip. And that's it, nice and simple. Uh, and that is attached to our audio player. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is we are going to modify the default trackable event handler to call those public functions that we wrote. So let's take a look. Okay, so. There's a bunch of stuff in here, but it's really, really not complicated. So we have a trackable behavior. In start, we get a component reference to it, and then we register this as the trackable event handler for it. Then in our public methods, this is really the kind of where the magic happens, on trackable state changed, right? So we're saying the trackable behavior status is the previous status and then the new status. So, or we're passing those in as arguments to the function, right? So we're saying if new status, the, the state that we're changing to, is equal to detected, tracked, or extended tracked, which is a, another tracking mode, um, which I won't explain, but maybe Vinny can give you some insight into in the chat. It's going to log to the console, we have found the trackable object, and then it's gonna call on tracking found, right? This function down here. So then if it was tracked, if the previous status was that it was tracked and then the new status is that it's not found, we lost it, right? So we're gonna say trackable X was lost and we're gonna call on tracking loss. And then we have a kind of a fall through else clause here uh, to call on tracking loss as well. On tracking found is super simple. We are just creating a array of renderers, right? And, or maybe it's a list. Anyway, we're creating a collection of renderers and we're using get components, plural, to get all of them. And I'm pretty sure that true here refers to getting inactive components. 
Uh, let's see. Well, I'm not going to worry about that for now. Um, and the we're doing that for the renderers, colliders, and the canvas, any canvases that are a child of this object, right? And remember, this is at the top of our hierarchy. So then we're going to use a for each loop to take each component and render components and enable it, right? So basically, we're just saying, okay, we found tracking on an image target. Let's turn on all the renderers that are a child of this. Interesting little piece of trivia about for each. For each was one of those things that we used to uh, tell everybody, no, don't use it because it was allocating. That has been fixed. For each no longer allocates, so it's open season on for each, and you can use it to your heart's content, uh, which is pretty neat because it's a convenient little thing to be able to use uh, when you're looping over collections. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to add, so we're doing that for the colliders, the canvases, and the renderers, right? We're gonna add to this a play on state change variable. We'll call it player. And we'll just say equals get component singular in children play on state change. Now, probably for performance and stuff, you could cache the reference to this and get it in a wake or start or whatever, but just to kind of stick with the way that all this other stuff is set up, I'm just gonna do it this way. So, and I don't think this is like a gnarly, it's not like a super expensive performance hit to do the get component calls here. So now we just wanna call some stuff. We'll do it after everything else. So we'll say player dot initialize, right? We'll enable the audio source and then player dot uh, play on up here. Boom, and that's it. And then all we need to do down here, just do the same thing, get the component reference here. Again, right, you could cache it. And then um, we're gonna just say player dot play on disappear. We don't need to initialize, right, because we've already enabled the audio source in this case. And so I'm just putting on my headphones so I can hear that this is working. So now, Save that, save that, make sure they're all saved, jump back over, and let's take a look at our audio player. We need to assign our appear and disappear clips, which are just these little mouth pop, pop, and whoop, just reversed version of the same sample. And I thought that was an appropriate sound for something popping into existence and just assign those to the appear clip and disappear clip slots. And this, let's take our target out of the view area and let's put it in. <laughs> Whoop, pop. <laughs> I find that unreasonably entertaining. Okay, so there we go. We can still shoot, whoop, oh, hands, come on, hand, don't, whoop, pop. I think it's kind of fun. It makes it more juicy, right? Having the sounds on the interactions, it doesn't feel glitchy when it disappears. It feels fun when it disappears. So I think that's kind of cool. And I feel like that's a whole interesting area to think about here is like, what does juice and juicy interaction feel like in AR, right? It's kind of an interesting thing to think about. Okay, great. So then I'm just going to whoop, duplicate that audio player. Up it down on our drone target as well. Zero out the position. And we'll just make sure he's working too, which he should be. Pop, pop, whoop, pop. Hilarious. Okay, great. So we've got our ability to hook into the default trackable event handler, right? Nice and simple way to call some call some of your own functions when you want to when the when the tracking uh when the object appears or disappears super fun and that is our show for today so i'm gonna hang out take some questions and thanks so much for watching